begin. Quote, the American Prophecy Project, or APP, was founded in November 1989 by Ingo Swan. It was designed as a one-year effort to utilize all available technologies in an attempt to future see events and situations. APP focused almost exclusively on predicting and forecasting the completely unanticipated and unexpected. Precisely those events which could not be foreseen by trend analysis and cultural political drifts or any other statistical procedures more traditionally utilized by future analysts." End quote. There were an impressive number of accurate predictions recorded in this newsletter, which ran until 1990, but we are not going to hone in on this one particular project, which was only one of many amazing programs Ingo created. Rather, I want to look at the ways that Ingo Swan's prodigious life foreshadowed a few things that are only now being discussed by the mainstream public and explore how subjects such as the military use of telepathy and contact with non-human intelligences, both of which Ingo explored in the 1970s, appear to be on the verge of completely changing our world as we progress towards the middle decades of the 21st century. That is to say that I would like to discuss Ingo Swan as both futurologist and American prophet. The Cambridge Dictionary defines the field of futurology as, quote, the study of social, political, and technical developments in order to understand what may happen in the future, end quote. While the term prophecy is defined as, quote, a statement that says what is going to happen in the future, especially one that is based on what you believe about a particular matter rather, rather than existing facts." End quote. In a 1990 letter to the writer and filmmaker Raul da Silva, Ingo wrote of how he had been combining these two fields for decades. He states, quote, as early as 1974, certain futurologists from Rand Institute and other places began coming to me with the complaint that their methodologies, essentially tabulating statistical trends and extrapolating from them, very often failed in predicting the actual future as it turned out. The major reason was that completely unexpected and unanticipated factors came into existence, cutting wide vagaries and paths across what could be statistically expected, thus ruining their efforts. What they wanted from me was to discuss whether psychic foresights could pick up on some of these unanticipated factors in time for them to be considered for decision making. I did not know how to do this at the time, I do now." End quote. Thus, this evening, I intend to explore er these areas in which Ingo Swan applied his genius, which I would argue was primarily found in his ability to combine the scientific with the ethereal. However, one should not misunderstand me. I do not mean to suggest that Swan was always conscious of the ways that his pioneering life and work would develop into today's headlines, where we find things like unidentified aerial phenomena and mind control beginning to be discussed at least somewhat openly by federal agencies. Nonetheless, when we look back with hindsight, we can see how some of the most fascinating and perhaps disconcerting issues that are only now entering the mainstream consciousness were actually considered by Ingo in the 1970s. In 1972, Ingo Swan took part in one of the first experiments of what would become a government-sponsored parapsychology research and operations program, most widely known today by its final codename, Stargate, 
at the think tank, SRI International. In what has now become the famous magnetometer experiment, Swan was able to, quote, alter the performance of a deeply buried, heavily shielded magnetometer for 30 second periods through the use of psychokinesis, or PK, and by then looking into the device and describing its mechanisms, end quote. In subsequent news coverage of the event, Time Magazine wondered if Swan's powers were more dangerous than the atomic bomb. And quote, Newsweek surmised that Swan's lab confirmed psychokinetic and clairvoyant powers required a rethinking concerning the importance of psychic giftedness, end quote. Government agencies seemed to agree as the Central Intelligence Agency contributed half of a million dollars to fund subsequent research. And over the next 23 years, the Defense Intelligence Agency, Army, Navy, NASA, and several other agencies all contributed funds to the ongoing psychic research and operations program, which closed in 1995. In fact, one of the first projects, commissioned by NASA, ran for just over a year. From April 15, 1973, to May 15, 1974, and culminated in the publication of a report titled, Development of Techniques to Enhance Man-Machine Communication. This project, quote, investigated several approaches to facilitating interactions between man and his machines, end quote. According to the final report, this program primarily utilized, quote, a four-state random stimulus generator considered to function as an ESP teaching machine. A subject tries to guess in which of four states the machine is. The machine offers the user feedback and reinforcement as to the correctness of his choice. Using this machine, we screened 148 volunteer subjects under various protocols and identified several whose learning slope and or mean score departed significantly from chance expectation." End quote. After six years of participating in many more experiments to develop the field of remote viewing, which included the psi abilities traditionally known as telepathy and clairvoyance, Ingo was asked to deliver a banquet talk titled, The Threat of Possibly Psychic Techniques in Future Conflicts, to the 17th U.S. Army Operations Research Symposium on November 8, 1978. In this lecture, he offered several examples of successful experiments in order to propose, quote, a new approach to practical psychic research, end quote, for which a fundamentally new paradigm was needed. He described this new paradigm by stating, quote, it is possible that people relate to the universe, to things in the universe, and to each other by communication and the information channels that are not wholly conscious, or indeed, may be mostly unconscious. Certain individuals can bring into awareness things, activities, or events that are beyond the range of physical sense. And in many instances, this type of information can be made consciously useful so that definite action can be taken based upon it." End quote. Swan further described this with a computer analogy, which has become a relatively common way to describe mental processes since his talk, in which he posited, quote, it is easy enough to see and even understand that the human being 
can act as a receiver and a type of biological computer and complex ones at that. What is not so easy to comprehend is the medium through which psychic information flows and indeed the sources of the information. Again, the year was 1978 and the Cold War was raging. So he went on in this talk to describe the Soviet research program that was also seeking to develop psi abilities such as telepathy, clairvoyance, and psychokinesis for military and espionage purposes. Combining his own hard-won knowledge through working with the American program with what was known about the Soviet program, Ingo posited that the practical research into understanding how information is transferred between two human minds or between a mind-machine interface was still in a preliminary lag in 1978. He described this beginner stage by stating that, quote, the possibility of psychic communication and information channels has been confirmed. And the proper study and research lines no longer needs to dwell exclusively upon where and how, but be directed to discovering what degrades or enhances practical applications." End quote. However, in the same talk, Ingo predicted a future in which with many accommodations, researchers would, quote, realize that we are working with human biosensor and biocomputer aptitudes that can probe and act as information conduits with a sensitivity, sophistication, and potential that is quite literally beyond our present comprehension." End quote. Again, in this particular talk, the primary global power that was discussed in terms of posing a potential threat in the field of psychic warfare was the Soviet Union. American intelligence agencies were well aware of the advancements in long-range telepathy and psychotronic hardware that were being made by the Soviet parapsychology research program, which had been operating longer than the American program. However, the United States and Soviet Union were not the only nations with the nascent psychic research program at the time. A declassified foreign technology report from just three years later in 1981 contains information about Chinese parapsychological research. Here, at the top of a page describing ex an experiment that obviously concerned personnel in the United States, I found a handwritten note from the director of the Stargate program, Hal Putoff, that reads, quote, Ingo, this is from a red Chinese paper on remote viewing. Did you train them? I know you don't tell me everything." End quote. It should be noted that I am not aware of any evidence that Ingo Swan ever trained Chinese remote viewers. However, for our purposes, this note is evidence that the United States government has been concerned about Chinese research into psychic abilities which were known in the China at the time as human body special functions for more than 40 years. With all of this in mind, I feel relatively confident in stating that Ingo Swan would not be surprised by the fact that on December 17, 2021, the United States Department of Commerce Bureau of Industry and Security issued a report in the Federal Register announcing that the Chinese, quote, Academy of Military Medical Sciences and its 11 research institutes use biotechnology processes to support Chinese military end uses and end users to include purported brain control 
weaponry, end quote. It is impossible for me to say this evening how immediately concerned we should be about the potential threat posed by Chinese deployment of mind control technologies. However, what I will relate to you are a few excerpts from translations of reports that the Chinese government allowed to be published about what they now call neurodefense and brain confrontation technologies. One article published by the Washington Times quotes a Chinese report titled The Future Con of the Concept of Military Supremacy, which states that the goals of the current incarnation of this Chinese military program are to shift the very nature of warfare itself, and that the near future will finally see the accomplishment of Sun Tzu's ancient dictum. That is, the People's Liberation Army recognizes that, quote, to win without fighting is no longer far-fetched, end quote. One translated excerpt of another report about this program explains that in the early 21st century, quote, war has started to shift from the pursuit of destroying bodies to paralyzing and controlling the opponent, to attack the enemy's will to resist, not physical destruction, end quote. The report is reminiscent of the dual focus of the Cold War era mind-to-mind -mind and mind-machine research in which Swan was a key figure. Today, the PLA boldly foresees a new vision of the battlefield. The same report goes on to state, quote, future human-machine merging will revolve around the contest for the brain. The two combatant sides will use various kinds of brain control technologies and effective designs to focus on taking over the enemy's way of thinking and his awareness, and even being able to directly intervene in the thinking of the enemy leaders and staff, and with that, produce a war to control awareness and thinking." End quote. Another report from 2019 describes the current Chinese mind-machine interface research a bit more. An interesting excerpt from it describes, quote, direct control of machines using thoughts through a mature brain-machine interface, end quote. Also, it should be mentioned that one of the organizations participating in this program the China Electronic Technology Group is apparently concerned about other nations deploying these capabilities against them. Thus, one area of research that this organization is undertaking for the People's Liberation Army aims at, quote, leveraging electromagnetic, biophysical, and material technologies to enhance the human brain's defense towards brain control attacks, end quote. It might be enough to end my talk this evening with these revelations, but there is another potential geopolitical rival that Ingo Swan also dealt with in the 1970s, which appears to have developed psychic technologies that are far superior to those currently being researched by the Chinese military and they have also been making recent headlines. In his book, Penetration, The Question of the Extraterrestrial and Human Telepathy, Ingo describes working with a team from an undisclosed government agency tasked with investigating extraterrestrials who were visiting the Earth in 1976. He had exactly three encounters with those he labeled, quote, the spookiest of spooks, end quote. The writer, professional remote viewer, and friend of Ingo Swan, Daz Smith, summarized these encounters quite well in a presentation given to the Applied Precognition Project in 2021 titled, 
Ingo, beyond penetration. Smith stated, quote, Ingo described his work with individuals in an unknown agency who study extraterrestrials, or ETs. His remote viewing of the hidden side of the moon and his shocking experience with a sexy, scantily dressed female ET in a Los Angeles supermarket. Ingo and an individual known as Mr. Axelrod took a flight to an unknown northerly destination, deduced by Swan as possibly being Alaska. Along with two twin bodyguards, Swan and Axelrod attempt to secretly watch a recurrent UFO appear and suck up the water of a lake." End quote. These unofficially sanctioned adventures were not Ingo's only time using his psi abilities to investigate extra, extraterrestrial objects or non-human intelligences. Rather, either individually or as part of a team, Swan used remote viewing to explore Jupiter on April 27, 1973, Mercury on March 10, 1974, Mars on June 14, 1975, January 29, 1976, July 17, 1976, and June 15, 1984. He also conducted other remote viewings of Earth's moon on February 23, 1994, February 23, 1995, and February 23, 1996, as well as April 29 and 30, 1999. It should be noted that I am not aware of any available information that indicates that any signs of life were found on either Mercury or Jupiter. However, according to Ingo and Lieutenant Colonel Tom McNear, who participated in the 1984 remote viewing mission to Mars and assisted with, with the publication of a special edition of Penetration in 2020, signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life were found on both the Moon and Mars. In the case of the Moon, Swan reported making telepathic contact with extraterrestrials who were visiting Earth in spacecraft that are responsible for at least some UAP encounters. The story which Ingo told about these experiences is a lot to take in. And it should be noted that there is still no public information available about any government-funded ET or UFO investigations units that operated in 1976. At the time of the original publication of the book in 1999, there were very few reasons for a skeptical public who did not know him personally and could only be vaguely aware of his work on classified programs to believe Ingo. However, for those who keep up with the UAP issue in 2022, there appear to be increasingly good reasons to believe the statements that Ingo made about his experiences with non-human intelligences. To begin with, there is perhaps the most shocking official information which was published in 2017 by Oxford University Press in the landmark book American Cosmic. In this book, the chair of the Religious Studies Department at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, Diana Pasolka, tells about her interactions with people involved in, quote, classified government programs in which the phenomenon was studied, necessitating secrecy among the participants, end quote. Within this group, Pasolka states that, quote, there are those who engage with and interact with what they believe are non-human intelligences, perhaps extraterrestrial or even interdimensional, end quote. One of these scientists, who formerly worked for NASA and goes by the pseudonym Tyler in the book, 
states that one of his roles in the program is to telepathically communicate with these non-human intelligences. At another place in the book, Tyler specifies that his space exploration began with his interfacing with some form of technology kept in a secure NASA facility where he worked in the 1980s. Tyler goes on to describe how, during this time, the recovered extraterrestrial technology, quote, emitted energy and frequencies that changed the way he thought, end quote. This eventually led to him having, quote, off-planet experiences, end quote, and participating in a program that capitalizes on his connection with, quote, off-planet intelligence that helps him create biotechnologies, end quote. However, this is a book, albeit written by a serious academic, who was required to submit it for a government review process before it was published by Oxford University that does rely, at least in part, on testimony from pseudonymous sources. That is not the case for all the books about more recent government-sponsored UAP research programs, though. In Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, an insider's account of the secret government UFO program, the named authors who participated in this program and also had to submit their work to a DOD security review prior to publication, cite a letter from Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to Deputy Secretary of Defense William Lynn on June 24, 2009, which, quote, closed with a statement that directly addressed his, that is, Senator Harry Reid's primary concern about the danger that Russia and China were gaining a technological advantage over the United States through their exploitation of UAP-related hardware." End quote. Thus, in 2022, the existence of UAP has been confirmed by the American Department of Defense. The existence of some form of non-human intelligence and government-sponsored programs that collaborate with these non-human intelligences has also been confirmed. It even appears that the United States is not the only nation that is in possession of hardware that did not originate on Earth. Furthermore, if we are to believe Professor Pasolka, her American government sources, and Oxford University Press, it seems that at least some of this UAP-related hardware communicates through a form of telepathic mind-machine interaction. However, this is still not the story that is being covered by mainstream news outlets. Most of the media coverage of UAP focuses on other investigations, such as the multiple reports that have been released by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the UAP study commissioned by NASA just a few weeks ago, and the official hearings and briefings given to members of the US Congress and Senate. Press statements from these sources often assert that, quote, there is no single explanation that addresses the majority of UAP reports, end quote. And that statement is not inaccurate. However, in the aftermath of the first congressional hearing on this subject in 50 years, which was held on May 17th, 2022, the DOD announced its establishment of a new all-domain anomaly resolution office, which will study transmedium UFOs that fly between space, the air, 
and under the water, end quote. Former Obama appointee to the DOD, and forgive me if I mispronounce his name, Marek von Rennenkampf clarified, quote, it's a direct quote in Congress, transmedium threats. So again, objects that are going water to air to space seamlessly in ways that we do not understand. To the United States, national security threats of this nature are expanding exponentially." End quote. Furthermore, Renenkampf took to Twitter to quote certain American senators who have made clear that what they have seen or heard about are not from this planet. Former presidential candidate and current member of the Senate National Security Working Group, Senator Mitt Romney's reaction to the information about UAP shared with him was to say that it is, quote, tech in a different sphere than anything we understand. China, Russia, and US are not there, end quote. Democratic Senator Martin Heinrich of New Mexico, who is a member of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, even more to the point said, quote, I can't imagine what's shown in some of the videos belongs to any government, end quote. Furthermore, while some may have interpreted her comments as a joke, it is still worth pointing out that in November 2021, another member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, told Politico, quote, as soon as we plan a code owl, that is, congressional delegation, I'll let you know. The Outer Space Congressional Delegation, or CODEL, is coming. End quote. How or why did it take so long for things which Ingo engaged with 40 to 50 years ago to make it into the news? Well, Ingo Swan explained that as well. In the same 1990 letter to Raul da Silva, which I quoted earlier, Ingo wrote, quote, for people cannot be interested in anything they do not understand or know about. If I waited for large scale public interest to manifest before I myself took an interest in something, I would be better advised to confine myself to selling shoes or working at a restaurant rather than fancying myself on the cutting edge of psychic research, a field which, if the trends might be observed, is just verging now on becoming tremendous." End quote. I frequently wish that I could talk to the man himself and ask for answers to the many questions that I have about the topics discussed this evening, and even life in general. I can only imagine what he might say, and honestly, I am no Ingo Swan. So I am not even going to attempt to predict what the coming decades will bring regarding the deployment of telepathic influence as concerns the Chinese and American governments, or what the first outer space congressional delegation predicted by Senator Kirsten Gillibrand might look like. In conclusion, I can only say thank you to Ingo for letting us know that these things were coming, even though very few people listened to him at the time. Thank you.